welcome to another lecture in our lecture series on design of structural steel connections we started with welds and welding in our previous lecture and in our last lecture we looked at three main things first we discussed what the size of weld means then we looked at the throat thickness of the weld and then we discussed about the length of weld so today we will be looking at fourth parameter that is required for the calculation of welding and welds and that fourth parameter is the permissible weld stress so for the calculation of design stresses in weld you can go to your code IS800 and look at clause 10.5.7 this code or this clause talks about the calculation of design stresses in welds and for now we are only looking at the calculation of design stresses for fillet weld so you can see here the design stress for fillet weld fwd is given by the nominal stress fwm divided by the partial safety factor gamma mw so how do you calculate this permissible stress this is the permissible stress fwn and this fwn is calculated as f u over root 3 so this permissible stress fwn is calculated as f u over root 3 and f u is if you see here what is f u f u is the smaller of the ultimate stress of the weld or of the parent metal so whichever has the smaller ultimate stress that value will be taken as EFU in this formula and gamma W EMW is the partial safety factor we know the value of partial safety factor is different for soft welding and site welding so if the welding is performed in a shop or in a factory the partial safety factor is taken as 1.25 because the welding when manufactured in a shop is thought to be manufactured under controlled conditions whereas if that same welding is done on the site itself then we take the partial safety factor is 1.50 so this is how you calculate the design stresses in weld and there is another clause that we have to consider and that we have to take care of while performing the calculation for weld that is we have to perform the interaction check so what is this interaction check So before going into this interaction check, let us look at these FA and Q stresses. What are these FA and Q stresses? So let us say that we have one plate here. So this plate is being joined to another plate which is at the bottom like this with the help of fillet weld so this upper plate the force is acting in this direction for the bottom plate the force is acting in this direction and these two plates are being joined by fillet weld one is at the back and another fillet weld is at the front here in like this way So this is the first case and now let us take another case in which let us say that one plate we have here this plate is being joined to another plate and for this plate the fillet weld is constructed here at the junction of these two plates the figure is not proper so just visualize this and the force is acting in this plate in this direction here so what is the difference between these two cases one and two if you look at this first case here you can see that the forces in these two plates they are acting parallel to the length of the weld what is happening here 
the forces or the stresses let us say the stresses is parallel to the well runs or well length so this is the length of the well in this direction and as a result of these forces that are acting on the two plates the stresses developed in this well are also along the same direction these two horizontal direction so that the stresses developed in the well is parallel to the length of the well or it is parallel to the run of the well well runs is opposed if you look at this second case here we can see that the longitudinal axis of the well is in this direction here that means along this direction we have the length of the well but the force is acting in the well or the force is acting in the plate in this perpendicular direction so that because of this force in the perpendicular direction the stresses in the well are also being developed in this perpendicular direction so for the second case we can say that the stresses in the well are perpendicular to well run or well length well run or well length so now we can see that there are two cases the first case in which the stresses are parallel to the well run or well length the stresses developed in this first case these are also known as q stresses this stress is represented as q and the second case where the stress is perpendicular to the well run or well length the stress developed is represented as f a so two kinds of stresses can be developed based on the direction of the stresses q stresses and f stresses so we have to perform an interaction check for the weld for these two cases of stresses you can see that after we determine f a and q which are the two stresses we have to calculate the equivalent stress f e and that is calculated as square root of f a square plus 3 q square and this equivalent stress should again be less than or equal to f u over root 3 gamma m w that means this design stress the equivalent stress should be less than or equal to the design stress so if you see the description here what it says f a is the normal stresses compression or tension due to axial force or bending moment whereas q it says shear stress due to shear force or tension so why it is saying so why for q force it is the why the code is saying that this q is the shear stress due to shear force or tension and f a is the normal stresses due to axial force or bending moment let us see one example for that you can understand f a and q in this way also or let us see another example for example let us say that we have one i section beam sorry i section column here we have an i section column here and this is being joined with another i section beam here in this way okay if you want to draw the side view then you can draw in this way so this is our beam and this is our column so let us say that these two beams and columns are being joined together by weld here in this line the weld is attaching this beam to the column and if you look at the side view then the wheel here and here are attaching this green beam to this blue column here and let us also suppose that our beam column joint in this case is being acted by two forces one is the ultimate shear vu and another is the ultimate moment mu. so what happens when this let, let us first take the case of this shear force only the shear force is acting in the downward direction here and because of this shear force in the downward direction the stresses in this weld here will also be developed in the downward direction you can imagine that so this stresses in the downward direction now you can see that these stresses are parallel to the direction of the force so when these stresses and the direction of the force is parallel what we call that we call that q stress so view creates Q stress 
and from this the R code has also written the same thing Q is the shear stress due to shearing force or tension U is our shearing force and that is creating the Q stress now what about this moment what kind of forces does this moment or what kind of stresses does this moment generate here for this moment what we can do is we can resolve this moment into a tension compression couple so for this clockwise moment we can say that we have a tension here and we have a compression here similarly in our case also we can say that we have a tension here and we have a compression force here sorry the sign became opposite let us say that we have tension and we have compression here now what is this tension doing and what is this compression force doing these are creating stresses in this weld here in the same direction of the force for example if the tension force is acting towards this side the stresses in the weld are also being generated towards this side whereas the compression forces are generating stresses towards this side here now we can see that the stresses that are being generated these are perpendicular to the length of the weld and what do we call these kind of stresses these kind of stresses we call is yaw stress so we can see that the moment is creating yaw stresses in our case so our code has also written the same thing for yaw it is the normal stresses compression or tension due to axial force or bending moment so we can now see that the shear force is creating Q stresses whereas the moments are creating the F stresses. So this is about the interaction check where we have to check the welds particularly we are discussing about fillet weld for the combination of stresses. And how do we find this F A and Q? The simple formula to find this F A and Q is force that is represented as P and divided by the effective throat thickness into the length of the weld. You can find this formula in this section here 10.5.9. So this is about the calculation of permissible weld stresses or the calculation of design stresses. So for the next part of today's lecture, we will see one simple numerical regarding the calculation of these design stresses. So let us say that we have a tie member of a truss girder. Let us say we have this tie member. Any it may be of any shape here. This tie member of a truss girder is connected to a gusset plate in this way so we have the gusset plate here this is the gusset plate let us say that this tie member is being subjected to a force of 600 kilo newton and the tie member is being connected to this gusset plate through a weld and we have done welding on three sides here one here one on this side and another in this side here now we have to check whether this weld is sufficient for this 600 kilo newton force we have been given the following dimensions for example let us say that the tie member dimension here is 250 mm the thickness of our plate is 14 mm The thickness of this gusset plate is 10 mm and the overlap of this member, the gusset plate and the tie member is 300 mm. We will also suppose that the size of our weld is 6 mm. Now we have to check whether these welds on the three sides of the tie member is sufficient to carry this 600 kN force or not. So to do the calculation, what we will do is, first let us suppose that the steel we are using is of grade Yafi 410 steel, such that for this steel the ultimate stress is 410 megapascals and the yield stress is 250 megapascals. And we will suppose that this welding is performed in the shop 
so that our partial safety factor will be equal to 1.25 now to proceed with calculation what we will do is we will first calculate the length of our weld you can see that welding is performed on three sides one side is of length 250 mm and two sides are of the length 300 mm so 250 plus 2 into 300 this will be the length of our weld which will be equal to 850 mm then we calculate the effective throat thickness we know that effective throat thickness is given by the formula ks where k is the factor depending upon the angle between the fusion faces we discussed it in our previous lecture so the value of k will be 0 0.70 and the size of weld as we have taken 6 mm the effective throat thickness will be 4.2 mm now we can calculate the design strength of our weld so what will be the design strength of our weld design strength of weld is given by the formula length of weld into effective throat thickness into e of u by root over 3 gamma w so how did we get this design strength of weld so this e of u over root 3 gamma m w as we discussed here in this section this is the stress value so when we multiply stress with area then we get the force value so this force value we get by multiplying stress into area this the terms inside the bracket will give us stress and the area of the weld is given by the length of the weld into effective throat thickness so LW we have got is 850 effective throat thickness 4.2 into 410 over root 3 into 1.25 this will give you force in newton to convert into to kilonewton multiply by 10 to the power minus 3 so if you multiply these terms you will get the design strength of oil to be 676.05 kilonewton now compare this value with the tension force that is acting on our tie member 600 kilonewton since the design strength of weld is greater than the value of force acting on our tie member we can say that this welding is sufficient for this design so this is how you calculate the design strength of weld there are two kinds of calculation that may be involved in this one is that you will be given the length of the weld in which parts of the members the welding will be performed and then you can calculate the design strength of weld compare that design strength with the force that is actually acting on your member and compare those two values or another way can be that you will be given the design strength of weld and then you have to calculate the length of weld for which you have to perform welding so that the force acting on our member can be resisted so those two kind of calculations may be involved in these cases so this is the end of our today's lecture today we discussed on the calculation of permissible weld stresses so let me add here, we have also discussed the calculation of permissible weld stresses today. So we have calculated and we have understood the calculation of all the parameters that is required for weld stresses calculations and for weld design. In our next lecture, we will look at one another example of calculation of weld stresses and then finally we will be starting with the analysis and design of our connections and we will start with beam column shear connection so this brings us to the end of our today's lecture keep watching our youtube channel thank you